Um, so going back on this PR, so I didn't want to merge it yet because I wanted to announce what it's doing and how it will break your uh, applications before you decide to update it. The um, idea of that is multiple things. Uh, the first idea is that before this version, every session in the SQL will create a transaction automatically by default, as in a database transaction and a transaction object in .NET. Um, and when I say every session all the time, it means even if your session is only doing reads. But when you're doing reads, and if your transaction isolation level is the default one as in the database, you don't need a transaction because every read will be using the same resolution level. So this version uh, introduced that change that when you start a session, like when you start a request in Orchard, um, if you just do reads like select, then it won't create a transaction. But on the first time you call, you do a change on an object and you call save and then the transaction, and then some things needs to go into the database then it creates a transaction automatically. Uh, so now it's lazily creating a transaction if there are update statements or insert statements or delete statements, any change. Um, that's the first change. Um, so this one is transparent. There is nothing to do. It's just that it's creating a transaction optionally if it's required. The second change is that if you really want to decide when the transaction is created and not wait for it to be automatically created, you can now call a begin transaction. That's why we have examples here. I won't be able to find an example of that. That's okay. So we have to we can call begin transaction and that will create a transaction or return the existing one if one is still open. And then there is another property that is dot current transaction that will give you either the existing transaction or um, null if there is no transaction. That's a way to check if there is a transaction. Um, so that other change is that everything has been renamed from commit async to save changes async. It's like an key framework and it's more obvious to know what it does, it saves the changes. And what it means is that at that point, if there is a transaction, it will be um, committed and then released. If there is no transaction, it will just do nothing. But this is why you, so this is where in our case, uh, we should have it somewhere in the middle where we do our actual commit when the request is done. But here, maybe here. Well, that's document store. Um, yeah, I think document store is, is actually one of my managers. Yeah, it's own session, but because it's a single term and yeah. or because it's, it's an AI, it's a scoped object, something like that. It has its own session. But, so here, that's the one. Yeah. So this is why it's called. And there is still the auto flush, meaning if you do some updates and then you do a query to reach some data, it will flush the, the changes to the database without committing the transaction, but your next request will be able to read the values that are in the database. Very useful. Open ID is calling save changes everywhere for some non obvious reasons. I assume it should just be flush or just do nothing. Uh, honestly, if the, if the tests are sufficient on OpenID, we should try to just remove these calls and see that it still works because it will still work. And by not calling it, it won't submit, it won't commit the transaction. So everything else that can happen after will be in the same transaction. That's the way it should be done. Um, so I don't really agree with how it's done here, unless it's proved to be not working this way. I think that was just done that way because it was following what um, the yep. identity software is doing. 
Um, and be, uh, one of the problems with calling safe changes like this is it removes the ability to actually cancel the session later due to other reasons. Yep. That's something I mentioned with uh, Shishai, who works on the EF team, when we talked about these patterns and the fact that we were doing it this way per request. And I think he said that it was not something that could be done with EF in this case, or it was, or he didn't think about his way of doing that. But at the same time, oh yeah, there is a big change, but well, I forgot to mention. Um, yeah, so, and, and that's why I was thinking to say at the same time. Um, so something that you can't do with the yes, SQL default version is, let's say you start creating a session and there is an exception in the middle, if you didn't do a try catch and call cancel on the finally, or on the catch, sorry, then it will commit the transaction because the disposing the session was committing the changes. So in SVLNet, we don't have this issue because there is a, we will wrap the main middleware with a try catch and catch any exception that happens in anywhere in the pipeline. But in some other apps, if you, if you forget a try catch, it will it will commit the changes, even if it didn't go over the full list of commands you wanted to execute. So that was a big issue with uh, uh, yes, SQL. So now that's actually changed, meaning that if you don't call save changes now, it won't save anything. You have to call save changes at some point to commit a transaction. And if you go to the disposing the session before you call save changes, it will cancel a transaction if it exists and close the connection. So save changes is now mandatory. Commit was not, save changes is mandatory if you want to save the changes. That's also to mimic the EF behavior. So the session itself is still um, disposable. It still needs to be disposed. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't, if you forget to dispose it, there is a finalizer that will, so when the GC is invoked on your session and that was not disposed, it will call the finalizer that will close the connection and transaction. But you should not come to that. You should dispose a session always. That's why the session is always in a using scope or in the case of Orchard, we have a big try catch and at the end of the middleware, we dispose a session explicitly. We save the changes and dispose a session which was there. Well, when I say we dispose a session, I assume it's because it's in the DI when it's registered and um, it should be in the DI somewhere when we register the service in the Orchard data. Maybe it has, yeah, somewhere. Not here, I don't know where it is. Maybe not changed here. But yeah, when we create the session, we also register it to be uh, disposed. I need to check. <laughs> As I don't see the dispose here, not even sure. It might be that we didn't have to dispose it before. It's in a piece of code that you haven't changed. Um, okay. Um, and I think just to suppose through DI, so search for add scope die session. For what? Scope? Um, add scope die session. session is scoped. How do you write it? Let's 
station. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, okay. Register before this pause. No, we don't do that. So we can add scoped. No, that's what we do. Okay, add scoped. And then we pass a lambda and we return the session. But at that point, I don't remember if the DI is disposing it. I think, I'm, I don't remember because I, I, I'm sure I find an issue with them. It was not doing the correct behavior and they changed it. Because the idea is that if they don't create it, but I give it, then they should not dispose it because I give it. And in this case, I give the instance. So it might come from something else, but it will dispose it. So they should not dispose it. So I don't remember if, if they do that. But here at the same time, register before dispose. So it's to commit the changes. And I have to check if we actually, um, I think we could dispose on it because I uh, on the, the profiles, I saw that some sessions were not correctly, um, well, were disposed, but we're still going into the um, finalizer. And I had to do a change to, um, Ah, actually, no, maybe they, it was just calling commit, and that's why. So they, they were, I, I saw the finalizer be called when it should not be called. So now when the decision is disposed, it's saying to the finalizer to not be called. I have to check when we dispose that or if the DI is disposing it. I hope the DI is not disposing it, but I don't see anything that disposes it. So that's interesting. Okay. Good. Uh, questions? Did I miss something? No, no chat here. Um, so this has been merged. So if you have modules that use the session, you need now to call save changes async, otherwise nothing will be saved. But you should not have any module that calls save. Flush still works the same. If you're not open ID, then we're fine. I think we'll see. That's it for a SQL 3 and lots of perf improvements also lazy, be doing things, less allocations, super great. And with the latest change I did this weekend, this morning. I need some, some more changes to do even less allocations. So the next update will get even less allocations. I don't want to patch it again. Um, or maybe I have the, the thing. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I have to check. Uh, that. Um, Did you um, like cancel ISIM as well? Yeah, I had to. Yeah. So here we've got the changes. I had to make cancel ISIM so because now. Can yeah. Sorry? So what will cancel it out? Cancel the transaction and close. Yeah. So yeah. before when you call cancel, it was just setting a flag and then on dispose, instead of committing a transaction, it will just roll back the transaction. But now the same way save changes async is instantaneous, cancel async is instantaneous and cancel the transactions and close closes the connection. Um, when you call cancel async. Does it remain a flag where everything else continues? If you continue saving stuff, it doesn't create a new transaction at that point. So, is it still? I was about to say it will, but it sounds so stupid. <laughs> that I just I'm just checking whether whether the behavior has changed or hasn't changed in terms of because cancel used to. Throw the whole session and you. Anything. And we call it cancel multiple times, so yeah, good question. But that will be very easy to, to check. So, yeah, and, and now I actually have two flags there, right? one flag before. So this one cancel sets the flag, release transaction. I think you can still call, you can still continue to, but cancel equals true. 
and then if you call save, doesn't care, but if you call save changes a sync, yeah, it, it won't, apparently it won't flush the thing. It won't take any change into account after that. It's not, it's not throwing any exception, but it will just ignore everything. Not sure it's the best thing to do, but I mean, that's a weird case also. Cool. Could be an option to say, oh, throw exception if you do bad things or just continue and ignore. Um, in this case, I think it's good, actually. I think that's good because it just sets the flag. So the same session is still used. You can still read. So your query still could go on, but at the end, it won't commit anything that you changed. So I think that's good. I like it. So this, uh, as you said, if there are multiple modules reacting to the same event, one will cancel, the other one will still be called, they will still work, they can call save and call reads and everything, but at the end of the, the, the request, nothing will be stored. That's good. Yeah, I think that's the behavior that, that works. Uh, it worked previously and it works now, so good, great. Okay. Um, 